Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O hope of the living and harbor of rest, where the weary in this world find rest, may we be received into the harbor of reconciliation and the place of rest with all those who please your divine will. And we raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good hope to all. O Lord, have mercy on us and save us. O Christ, our God, inflame our hearts with love, that we may love you and each other. Fill us with faith and confirm us in true and firm hope. May we persevere in good deeds, that we may be justified by you, Please your will all the days of our lives and glorify and thank you now and forever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love, according to your great compassion. Blot out all my transgressions, O oh, wash me completely from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. My transgressions truly I know them, my sin is always before me. Against you alone have I sinned, what is evil in your sight I have done. and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear rejoicing and gladness at the bones you have crossed paved so. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. I will teach transgressions your ways that sinners may return to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God, God of my salvation, and then my tongue shall ring out your justice. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight, Burnt offerings from me would not please you. My sacrifice to God, a broken spirit, broken and humble heart, of no God you will not spurn. In your good pleasure shall favor to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifice, Burnt offerings wholly consumed, then you will be offered young bulls on your altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the gate of mercy, open to sinners who knock on it. The hyssop you purifies the impure who came close to him. To the good one be glory and honor on this day and all the days of our lives and
our souls are protected, and on the glorious day of your second coming, mercy shall be given to us, and we will raise glory and thanks to you now. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, 
announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, The next day, the one following the Parashevi, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate, and they said, Sir, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, had said, After three days I shall be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave may be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him away and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. And Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting a guard. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and sealed the stone and set a guard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This ceremony is one of our greatest treasures we have in the Maronite tradition. But sadly, we've been so much become Latins in the West that no one thinks of it any longer. Because of the fact that the Latins don't do anything on Holy Saturday. But for us, it has a dual meaning. It has a meaning of keeping watch at the tomb, and as you see in the ceremony, when we finish, it's a proclamation of the resurrection. This ceremony ends by beginning Easter. It is also the watch that we keep at the tomb, and so the reading of the Gospel that we have, there's two Gospels actually for this, one or the other being read. You had a different one in your booklets. But the keeping watch of the men who come to Pilate and they say, look, he said he was going to come back from the dead. And so you have to set a, you have to take a guard here. You have to take care of the fact that he's not <coughs> going to be stolen away the body. And they're just going to make the whole farce worse than it was in the beginning. Notice that Pilate doesn't send a guard. He just tells them, you have a guard, you have soldiers, you take care of it. And so they go and they seal the stone, which is rolled across. Put a seal on it, so that it'll be broken if it's opened, and there's a guard that's there. And so we keep watch at the tomb. It's so very important. To the Eastern traditions, this Saturday is very important. It's called the harrowing of hell. We use this term, we say it in the creed all the time. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. We say it in the Apostles' Creed every day. But for most in the West, we just kind of go zing, we go right by it. But it's a very profound understanding, and the East much more puts an emphasis on it, is that this is the day that the redemption is being accomplished. This is the day that the radiant and divine, divinized soul of our Lord entered into Sheol, into the place of death to bring hope to those who have waited for the coming of this day. 
It's called the harrowing of hell or the harrowing of Sheol because it's the shattering of, of death. It's the shattering of the grip of sin. It's the shattering of the dominion of Satan over the human race. And harrowing, you know, it's the old English word. Harrow is a, a hoe. And so you hoe. It's the, it's the breaking up. This is what our Lord is doing on this day. When the body lays in the tomb, that body is divine. Our Lord as a man dies, but body and soul, spirit, he is completely united to the divinity forever from the day of his incarnation. And so when the body lays in the tomb, it's divine. Our Lord is dead as a man, but this is God's body. This is divine that lies in the tomb. And our Lord in his soul, in his human life, he enters into the place to shatter the death because the living one, cannot be held. And hence the idea of breaking up the clods of earth, hoeing, breaking up the soil, the harrowing of hell. It's quite a beautiful image. But as you see in the hymns that we talk about, this is the day that redemption and pardon and forgiveness is brought to, the, to creation, not just to me, but to the entire creation. The world is being restored. And yet, on earth, what do we see? A tomb. With angry men outside of it, sealing it, proving the fact. Let's prove these idiots wants to be idiots for good. And we're going to prove to them nothing's going to happen here. You see the frustration of human action, the frustration of human plans outside this tomb. And what is it? It's just a stone cave carved out that has a dead man's body in it. But that body is God. And that body at the tomb is the reason why the apostles run away and lock themselves on this day. They're locked away. They're absolutely terrified that they're next. They're going to be arrested now. Their accomplices. Everyone runs away. And the women who show the most stamina they're just simply making sure they have everything together so we can go tomorrow and finish the proper embalming. This has just been such a terrible time, such a terrible day, and they're emotionally all upset, but they don't believe. They don't have hope. They don't believe he's going to return from the dead, which he told them on numerous times that he would. The only person on the face of the earth who had faith and who had hope on that day was the ever Virgin Mary, the mother of God. She knew, she believed that he would rise from the dead. Which is why in the Latin tradition, Saturdays are devoted in honor throughout the year in honor of the mother of God. It is Mary's day because Saturday is the day in which she was the only person on the face of the earth to retain faith. That's why in the Gospels you have no recording of him appearing to his mother. You need not. There's no proof necessary. Though the fathers do consider that in the middle, the first person to whom he actually appeared was his mom. But it's not recorded. She doesn't go to the tomb. She doesn't go with the women. She's not ready to prepare a body because she knows there's no body there. And of course, in the Maronite tradition, this vigil, this annual vigil at the tomb of our Lord, this watching, is why in the Maronite tradition, Saturdays are dedicated and devoted to the memory of the dead. And our normal Masses that we offer on Saturday, the actual Saturday Mass, not the Sunday Mass in the, in the evening, are always dedicated in honor of the dead. So while all of our prayers always mention the dead, our faithful departed, those who have reposed in the Lord, the Mass on Saturday specifically is in their memory. So in the Maronite tradition, we're surrounded by the dead, and it is a beautiful thing. Because death is never going to be a place for Christians which is definitive. Because of the harrowing of hell, the shattering of death, the shattering of the abode of death, we have hope. And that's why when the ceremony finishes, we finish 
proclaiming the resurrection. But as we mentioned, there's a second aspect to this day, which is one of forgiveness. And normally, huge parish, tens of thousands of people coming on this day, you all, the priests are in the confessionals, hearing confessions while the ceremony goes on, and people are going in. You also see in the prayers the aspect often very much of our Mediterranean life. So much about forgive, 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 be reconciled, drop the grudge, stop being angry. Now, has there been anything that's more Mediterranean than that? Vendetta, vengeance, right? And so there's the aspect of forgiveness, and that's the other gospel that is often read, but one that we're not emphasizing this year. Because I think that in the midst of the present crisis, it's really more important for us to understand that death is not the end of the world. To say that the people these days in the world, they like scream and run in terror. So many people are terrified. Apparently 911 in New York is ringing every 15 seconds. For people who aren't sick, they don't have a fever, they're just terrified. They're terrified because they're stupid and just have their faces glued to screens 24 hours a day. So their terror is very much home generated. But they're also terrified because they do not know the harrowing of hell. They do not know that the living one has shattered death. And yes, this body may die. I don't want to die. You don't want to die. But we're not terrified by it because we know that that death has already been embraced by the living one and shattered and, and broken in its dominion. It does not have control over us. And when that faith lives within us, we are free. Doesn't mean we are reckless. Doesn't mean we are careless. Doesn't mean we are, we are without care. But it does mean that in our seriousness, we are never scared. Because death itself is not finished. And that's why in the Maronite tradition, it is so beautiful that we always mention our dead. Every single day, our dead, our dead, our dead, our dead. And most people would think that's really morose. But for the Christians, of course, we understand that the living one has made us all part of his one body. And we may not see the genize, those who are not in the Aramaic genize, unseen to us. But it doesn't mean they're not with us. It doesn't mean that they're not present. And that is a very beautiful and consoling notion. And someday we know that it will all be restored in the original beauty of the garden, the way it was meant to have been in the beginning. In the meantime, we wait. We keep vigil at the tomb. And we wait for that manifestation of what our Lord will bring about in His own person his own humanity, because that gives us the path for the future. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. <clears throat> we have the supplication on page 87 that we'll recite together. At last name, Peter, do you have the melody in your head? It's the Bonto de Moriaco. No? Okay. O oh, hearts full of anger, take heed. Go make peace with your foes, and embrace them with love and compassion. Engrave on your souls Jesus Christ. As he humbled himself, you should humble yourselves and rent heart. Does anger still reign in your hearts? And turn from the devil, Christ who died on the cross. Your true teacher. If I love for your neighbor is gone, and you hate Jesus Christ, who taught mercy and love and forgiveness, let Christ be our teacher and guide, for he showed us the way to forgive from our hearts, imitate him. All foes will be turned into friends and sing together in peace. Sing praises to him who forgave us. Stand.
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Christ our Lord, extend the thanks which we now offer to you and one another. May the grace and the power of your Spirit come to purify, sanctify, and save May your life be a model for our lives, so that we may live imitating your life, your death, and your resurrection. May we reach that day which will unite us to you and to each other, and we raise glory and thanks to you now. Christ is truly risen. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. Alright, now you do it in Syria. It'll be in the bulletin tomorrow, so you can read it both in the Syria and phonetically. Mishiho Kom. Mishiho Kom. Mentabo. Mentabo. Mishiho is Christ. Mashiho Kong Men Kabo. 